Hi, everyone. Welcome to our first Three Strands podcast. We are so glad you're here. My name is Leah Wyrick. I am your host and the founder of Three Strands Recovery Wear. I founded my company shortly after my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2016, after seeing firsthand the complications that she went through post-surgery. After being with her every step of the way through every doctor's appointment, every surgery, um, and just getting to see things firsthand very early on, I saw that she could have benefited from a better post-surgical recovery bra. So teaming up with Dr. Samuel Roy and based on my mom's complications, I created the Resilience Bra a post-surgical patent pending recovery bra that helps women prevent complications from arising by providing them with a very unique bra that caters to every need that they might have with every unique bell and whistle that you can think of. You know, I wanted to create our product to differentiate itself from many competitors on the market um, to really take a deep dive into what these women need in their post-surgical bras and go beyond the bra to create a community where women can be truly heard, where they can be supported every step of the way throughout their healing journey. You know, when I look at the recovery bras on the market today, their companies are really struggling to continuously innovate these products and advance their products. And they also fail to provide resources to women before, after, and during their surgeries. So I started my company with a purpose in mind to make an impact on women going through any type of breast surgery, whether that's breast cancer related or cosmetic surgery related. I wanted to help women with a product that I've developed over the past three years. I also wanted to take a step further to create a three strands community where on our website, all patients going through any type of breast procedure, whether cancer or cosmetic, has resources that they can learn more about their diagnosis, their procedures, life after surgery, and more through articles, blogs, and podcasts. I also wanted to take another step further to create our own podcast for a place where everyone can hear from special guests that can speak about various topics that will help benefit you. We want to provide you with everything you need on your healing journey from the bra to the community. We are always here for you. To kick off our first podcast, I wanted to bring on a special guest, the inspiration behind my company, the strongest woman that I know, and someone that I look up to every single day. My mom, Nancy Wyrick. Hi, mom. <laughs> Hi, Leah. Thank you for having me. We are so excited that you're here um, and really excited to talk to you about, you know, your journey and what you went through. And you've been a part of Three Strands for a very long time since the beginning in 2018. And you also have an opportunity to talk about your own diagnosis and what you went through, um, as well as have that special insight into you know, starting Three Strands from the ground up just alongside me. So will you tell everybody a little bit more about yourself? I sure can. Um, so my name is Nancy. I've had a long career in banking. Um, I thrive on my work and I thrive on my family. So this is really super special. But for a long time, I didn't thrive on me personally. And so I can tell you that having a health scare is a scary thing literally. Um, and for me, it rocked my world. I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2016, caught it super early, which was a blessing, but it was too far along to just treat really simply. I had surgery, I had a mastectomy and had a single mastectomy. I chose to go that route because I, it was caught so early. That's, that was my personal decision. It's very different for everyone. I respect that. But for me, that was my decision. So that surgery led to a lot of subsequent surgeries and Leo will probably talk a little bit more about that, but it definitely, my experience was definitely part of Leah's inspiration. Um, the other part for Leah is just her drive to, to create a solution that will help women not go through what I went through. You know, she saw it firsthand. However, Leah, you, you have not given up on this and you're determined and that's all you. I don't give me credit for that. Well, you have to take some credit. <laughs> well, I, I did raise you. Did you. Raise me. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's a little bit of, of my, my cancer story. It's not my whole story, but it's a big part because as women who have gone through this, it's quite a ride. And so it's, it is a part of me. It will never leave me, but I've moved on and I'm very focused on helping Leah progress her product in any way that I can. 
Yes, she can. She's is the person that I call 24 seven, probably about five to six times a day <laughs> to ask many questions to, to get advice from, because you know, that's, that's what we do at three strands is we go back to the patients, the ones that went through this. I can't personally say that I went through it, went through a surgery like this, whether it's cosmetic or breast cancer related, but I was really close to it. And it made it a very big priority for me to go to the sources, go to the people that have been through this, this traumatic experience or been through a surgery where it does take a good significant portion of your life. How many and people do you think you've talked to? A lot. <laughs> How many? A lot. Like, I mean, I have to say hundreds of people. Yeah, I agree. Um, and that's, yeah. and that's what really, really helps us to stand out as a company is we go back to those people because those are the most important people to us and the people that we want to make a priority in my, in the company. So, you know, we want to dive further into that, but you, and you guys have heard a little bit more, but you know, I'm curious, mom, what was your saving grace during your healing journey? Well, from right from the beginning was that it was found early. I mean, mine was found during a routine mammogram. So while very, very scary, it could have been much worse. So if that's, if that's anything, it's a reminder to everyone to do those preventative exams and don't put them off. I'm a busy person, but those are things that I don't put off. And boy, on this one, I'm especially glad I didn't. And then my, you know, so my saving grace was that because I, my, what I went through was e an easier road than it is for, for some women. Um, as I, as I got further along, it was, it was faith. It was faith that God would give me the strength to get through this. I always felt that. I always felt that. And then it was also my family. So it was caught early. I had faith that I would be strong enough to go through whatever was dealt my way. And I had a family that was there for me. So I would say that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that's what our company was really built around was a faith component, was a support component, because, you know, the women that we want to cater to, the women that are going through this procedures or, or any type of, you know, breast related surgery, you know, we see those women as being super powerful and having so much strength and needing, you know, just needing that support to help them get through this difficult time in their lives. And that's what we wanted to, that's what we want to continue being for patients just like you. You know, we want to be a, a, a shoulder that you can lean on, a support system for you um, as a company. That really helps us stand out, I believe. And uh, what's a, a really unique kind of side note to that is the name of my company, Three Strands Recovery Wear. Actually, my mom and I were shopping in Hobby Lobby during this time when I was trying to come up with a name for my company. You know, Hobby Lobby has the best signs that are super cheap. So we had to go get a couple. I mean, you have to when you're there. So we found a unique sign that said a cord of three strands is not easily broken. And, you know, we saw that um, as a really cute sign for my mom, my dad and I, as you know, we're the only ones in the family. So three of us and um, we're a very strong, close knit family. So getting that sign, we put it up in our living room, just took a look at it every day. I struggled with the name of the company for a while. I was on Google name generators day after day, and it was horrendous. It was horrible. And I could never find anything that I wanted to truly represent the name of the company. And that was to be a strong powerful and resilient name that reflected just what these women are. Um, and so one day I was laying in the living room with my family and looked up at that sign and I saw three strands and I knew that that was it. That was what we wanted to be is that had the name of strength. It had the name of power. And that's exactly what my mom has and still has to this day. And that's what other women have too, that are going through this and you have Absolutely. to. Absolutely. And, you know, it, it, women come into this and there's all sorts of diagnosis and whether it's caught early or whether it's caught late, that faith component and that strength that you need is, is so important to get you through some of the darkest days. And I'm going to tell you, there are dark days and people that have been through this understand it and the caretakers of those women understand it too. You've got to have something like that that gets you through the dark days to know that this is going to end sometime. It's not your life. It's not forever. And so that, that piece that Leah, that you just described was super important to me. Absolutely. Kind of leaning into that support section of what we just talked about, what support was most helpful for you during that time? I mean, you had a long journey. It was over a two year period. I mean, sometimes it's shorter, sometimes it's longer, but for you, it ended up being a lot longer than you thought it might be. What was that support that really helped you get through it? 
I, I think that a, a real dependency on a care team that I had confidence in was super important. And if I didn't feel good about a doctor, I left. I went to another doctor. So finding the right care team before, once I was developing, developing my treatment options and plan was, was a great measure of support for me and comfort right. that I was in good hands. Right. Talking to women that have gone through this or, or researching or, you know, if I'm, I'm a creature of knowledge. I want to have, I want to know the facts, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So talking to women that have been through it, doing a little bit of research on my own, but not enough to be scared. You know, if I saw something that made me scared, I, I quickly get out of it because right. I, I wasn't ready to go quite there. I wanted to find sites and women who inspired me, not who scared me. So that was important to me. And then, like I said, my, my, my family, my mom um, was a, a huge inspiration to me during this time as well. So I'd say friends who have been through it, research that I was able to do, my care team, and my family. There's always something about mamas. <laughs> mamas they're, are the best. They are always <laughs> there when you're sick, you know, whether that's a cold or going through breast cancer. And if it wasn't in for those that don't have their mom still around, um, you know, it could be a best friend. It could be a coworker that is just there checking on you routinely to make sure you're okay. So there's always that person. Right. And you've made it a priority so, to be a person for other women going through that. Oh, absolutely. I, you have to pay it forward. And, you know, it's a, for me, it, it's a, it was a private time for me. I didn't, well, you fix that. You've told the world about it. I, I told the world for about four years now about your breast cancer diet. But I have to say it, it's, it was, it started as a very private moment for me. And not that I was ashamed by any means, but it was, it, it was just private. It was something I was working through. And like I said, I had dark days. So it was something I was working through. And as a person who's never encountered a health issue, um, it, it was a good one. So, so I'm very respectful of women who are going through it when I offer to help, but I do offer to help. Yeah. You need to, you need to have someone who's been through it that can, they're the only ones that truly understand right. what it's like. Right. And that's, so. and that's why I keep saying we go back to these women for help with our continuously developing yes. product. Yes. I mean, you have to, and if these, what these companies other recovery garment companies aren't doing is just that they're not going to these patients. They're not going to these women that have truly been through these, no. these procedures. No. And that's the problem here. I mean, I will, I will always, I've always gone on a rant about whatever other companies are not doing right. And that's what exactly we're trying to fix here right. um, is, is again, provide that support. And I will preach that all day long. <laughs> well, I think for them, it's a, it's a throwaway product. It's, it, you know, it's not a garment that they seek to make, to invest in because they, for most women, mm -hmm. it is viewed as a short-term investment. Right. And I, I don't think that the Resilience Bra, the product that you have invented is that. It's, it's too powerful right. and versus a piece of fabric that right. was put on me. I mean, this is the most <laughs> thought out product. <laughs> Over a three-year time period where we have just wrapped up a 60-patient beta test where we took all of the feedback from our 60 women that were getting surgeries done for breast cancer, having a mastectomy, having a reconstruction, having an explant surgery, having an implant surgery. We took all that feedback and we listened. And that's what we have to continue doing is listening um, to be the support, to be the listeners, and then to create valuable and important products that are going to help people. And anyway, that's going to get me off on a tangent for the rest of the <laughs> podcast. But I, that takes me right into our next question of what do you wish that you would have had during your healing journey? What, what could have there have been better for you um, or better for other people today? So I think probably the first thing that comes to mind is the thing that one of the moments that inspired you to, to invent the resilience bra, which was a safe place to rest a drain. Explo um, can you explain the drain <laughs> the for drain, other people that might not uh, know what a drain is? The awful, awful drain. So the drain is inserted when you've had a mastectomy to help capture the fluids that are still around that, that don't go away after surgery. And that's just a process that your body has to work through. And it's a really, really important process. So the drains rest against your body and they have no place to go. They just dangle. And they're long. They're long. They're, 